What forces are these faith healers unleashing? What magic are they performing? The answers lie deep within ourselves. Across the millions of years of man's evolution, the most important development for the survival and eventual dominance of our species was the enlargement of this area of the brain, the frontal lobes, which give us powers of self-control, organization, and the ability to anticipate, to see ahead. But there was a terrible price to pay. We humans are the only living creatures that can foresee our own inevitable decay and death. To compensate for this fearful understanding, there was a parallel development in the human brain. As the frontal lobes were expanding, the temporal lobes and the limbic system were shifting and regrouping, opening the gateway to memory, creativity, emotion and fantasy. We gain strength from the belief that a soul, a spirit, lives on in another life or another realm when the body dies. We developed a religious sense. But even before we die, religions offer us the possibility of short-term victories over disease and death. And in spite of the many advances in modern medical science, millions of people are still turning to religious healers for miracles. Although we could find no evidence of cures at these events, something was happening in the heat of the moment. On and off stage, people were breaking through pain barriers and performing feats they had hitherto thought impossible. Many remained convinced they had been cured, whatever doctors and specialists said to the contrary. These crowds were genuinely affected. But what is the real power of work here? For answers, we turn to some of the world's leading scientists and theologians. Something physical, something chemical happens to us when we're in a large crowd. I don't want to draw the comparison too far, but Hitler understood this. Hitler understood that you can say things to a crowd of 100,000 that are more effective than saying them to a crowd of 100. The steps of soldiers marching through history they are marching in unison. They're doing the same thing at the same time. The parade, the acclaim of the leader in the enormous square, whether it's in Nuremberg or Red Square, the entrainment of the drums, of the marching steps, of the chant, of the song, of the gesture, the salute. All these elements have the effect of submerging the individual into the group. Large numbers of people, all together, with a single purpose, performing single acts in lockstep. They are like one organism. That is the pitch to which the organizers bring the people. They, they bring them to persuade them to do something that individually they might not do, like charge into battle, uh, risk death, to bayonet the enemy. Or leap out of their wheelchair. Or leap out of their wheelchair, uh, if that's what God has ordained. Effective speakers, people who can manipulate crowds for good or bad, have similar characteristics. So when you look at the Bonkas, the Hins, the Hitlers, the Nuremberg rallies. The operations are very similar, and they should be, because they're all human beings influencing other human beings. The good or the bad is a function of value judgment and, of course, historical perspective. The anointing. <laughs> to personal charisma and the well-tried techniques of crowd manipulation, Hin adds another dramatic ingredient. Fire on the choir. Fire! This was a favorite device of an earlier faith healer, Catherine Kuhlman, whom Benny Hinn first saw in action when he was 20 
and has always acknowledged as his inspiration. Just give it to him, just give it to him, and the power of God goes through this body. Throwing people over by the power of suggestion is, in fact, an old hypnotist trick, and it predates Kuhlman and Hinn by more than 200 years. You must let every guard down. First, there's the classic hypnotic induction, where the aim is to lull the audience into a highly suggestible state. You become completely open. And as you relax deeper and deeper, you begin to enter hypnosis. Going deeper, going Dr. Deeper. Irving Kirsch is not a hypnotist by profession. He is a scientist whose life's work has been the study of the human mind. The more relaxed you feel, the more deeply relaxed, and the more deeply hypnotized you become. One question had always intrigued him. In any group of people, there's a broad range of susceptibilities to hypnotic suggestion. How do you create a situation where everyone is suggestible? Touch! Touch these dear people. More and more completely relaxed, going deeper. And Kirsch deeper, recruited 60 volunteers deeper, and subjected and them to the relaxation. full hypnotic induction. He found that some could resist legs, hypnosis knees, until he played a legs. trick. Soon you will begin to hear something. Some music, some very faint music. Strange music. Unbeknown to his subjects, Kirsch's colleague was secretly waiting for her cues in an adjoining room. You can hear it now. You can hear the very strange music. And soon it's beginning to fade. The music is going. It's going. The music is gone. Your hearing has returned to normal. Open your eyes while remaining deeply, deeply hypnotized. Soon you're going to turning red once the trick was redder, played even the resistors deep fell deep under deep his deep spell deep and remarkably deep 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 many deep remained deep highly suggestible deep even deep after deep Kerr deep had deep shown them how they had been deceived with the music and lights you can see the room normally in the charged atmosphere of a faith healing service this response can set up a chain reaction first the preacher selects those in the crowd who are most responsive to the faith healers initial suggestion once on stage, these people are like Kirsch's music and lights, confirming and reconfirming everyone's expectation of a particular response to the faith healer's suggestion, until the whole audience has fallen under his spell.